Hello, everybody. Hello, it's Monday, August the 8th. And this Morning, is our, Justin. Hey, this is our private members only session. Welcome. What up? What's, what's, up going, there, what's going on, fellas? How are you? Yeah, so far so good. All right, all right, good, good. Um, you ever have that sensation you feel like you need to sneeze, but it's just not quite there yet? It's not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up right now. <clears throat> well, I hope everybody had a good weekend. Anything exciting happen over the weekend? Well, can't think of anything exciting. I uh, went to my friend's races. Yeah, yep. You went to your friend's house and did what? Oh, my! no, my friend races. Uh, we oh. got a racetrack out here. It's a dirt track. He races dwarf cars. Yeah. Wow. Super. That's cool. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. So you went to a racetrack or uh, like he was racing? You went and saw the race? Yeah, yeah. It's a racetrack. There's a bunch of different, you know, classes of cars. And but um, he's in one of the funnest class, man. They're like, they're like little dwarf cars. And there's like 20 cars out there. Once it goes green, man, you're having instant cautions. People are spinning out. He's not any good or nothing, but uh, he had a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's a good time. Yeah, sounds like a good time, man. That's really good, dude. I'm glad you had fun this weekend. And uh, have you been have, have you done that before, or was that a first for you? Oh, no, we, we go out there like every other weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, so it's something you just enjoy doing on the rig. Yeah. Nice, real nice. What'd you do, Larry? Oh, well, I just went to a birthday party for my great, great niece. That makes me sound old, don't it? No. No. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, great, 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 great niece? Great, great niece. Yep. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Well, good. So how many living generations are there right now? What, four or five? Is that what that means? Oh, it's my wife's sister's okay. kid, grandkid, <laughs> I guess. Great grandkid. <laughs> wife's sister's great grandkid. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I get all them greats in there. I get. Oh, uh, that's super. Well, that's great. You know, there's there's a uh, there's a lot of value in having family around and. I think everybody that has family around kind of recognizes that and appreciates that. Hopefully that's good that you spend time doing stuff with family, Larry. I'm glad to hear that. A lot of people just sit around the house like me. Don't do anything. No. <laughs> uh, do anything, I, huh? I do stuff. Huh? Don't do anything. huh? I do the same thing I do every night. And that is try and take over the world. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yes, um, I'm a bit of a workaholic, unfortunately. And I have a hard time taking time off. And, and I don't know why, because I used to be the exact opposite of that. Okay. And that was a problem for me. And I had to correct it in my life. And once I corrected it, Went now, too, went now too far it's the, the other way, yeah. You know, the you know what they say the pendulum always swings the other direction. I don't want to work too much, but spend a little time with the wife, she'll be getting mad at you. Yes, yes, that is so true. And doing things like okay, so I've just been contemplating since it's just us hanging out here. Um uh, 
I've just been contemplating what if I just bought a pickup truck and a camper trailer and just went and saw shit. <laughs> there you go. I don't blame me. Uh, you know, maybe that good would idea. be a good idea to cure my workaholicness, man. That's right. Um, just go see some shit. Like, I mean, some of the things that God made, you know, and uh, that'd be cool. Yeah. I've seen a lot of things. My wife hasn't seen as many things as I have. And so I feel like I owe it to her. Sure. So I want to buy, buy maybe a truck and a little camper trailer and that sounds like so much damn work. Oh, man, they are work. <laughs> oh, man. But it might be good for me. Or I could just like, you know, hey, uh, let's just get on a plane and go. Why don't I do that? I don't know. I should do it more. And I've been telling myself this recently, too. It kind of dawned on me that this would be good for everyone that watches me on YouTube and you guys in the club here to see me do something with my wife. That would be fun. You guys, I don't ever really show anything, do I? I've never shown anything. I'm the most secret agent coach there is. Well, you were on the beach one time somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, that's the only thing I've ever shown, I think. So, yeah, I probably ought to probably ought to let you guys see how fun it is when you do get this going too okay now that's something i've you know hey you know anybody ever watch wrestling <laughs> not for years okay well right now the wwe world champion is roman reigns and roman reigns a number of years ago used to have a catchphrase you know how these professional wrestlers got catchphrases and stuff like you know like like macho macho man randy savage you remember him yeah i remember him oh yeah okay that was his catchphrase <laughs> <laughs> well roman reigns had a catchphrase for a while and it was i'm not a good guy and i'm not a bad guy i'm just the guy the guy okay and the crowd never really caught on to that it wasn't anything that excited anybody when he'd say that shit like when randy the macho man randy macho man savage said oh yeah like people were like oh yeah that's that's him he's fucking cool okay well roman reigns being and it, so what i started saying when i see him say that i because i used to watch it a little bit on tv i ain't watched it in a while but i'd i'd see him say that he'd say i'm not a good guy i'm not a bad guy and then i would say i'm just a boring guy yeah. right he's not a good guy or a bad guy he's just fucking boring <laughs> and so i feel like in a way that might be me <laughs> that might be the the just the pinpointing me right there man you know and uh i don't know i'm not a good guy i'm not a bad guy i'm just a boring guy so i need to get out of the damn house get a truck and a trailer or or get a plane ticket or get a hotel or get a timeshare or get a airbnb on the beach someplace or do something because i'm 45 years old and i'd like to kind of like maybe uh, enjoy life a little bit sure yeah so um or sorry you guys for letting me vent <laughs> <laughs> i've got all kinds of personal problems today uh, I got another one. I've got a I've got a tire that's just fucking impossible, man. I've got a I've got a little hot rod vehicle that me and my wife drive, and it's got I it's got these specialty fucking racing tires on it. <laughs> what kind of car is it? Well, it's a Honda Civic. It's, okay, it's it's a hatchback and uh, turbo and all this shit, and it's got got stuff on it it doesn't need and i mean we're not trying to race it anywhere but at the same time it's uh it's a little hot rod and um it sounds cool does it yeah you know it's, it's pretty cool yeah i mean the they they purr like kittens you know 
and it's kind of kind of cool in that way. But uh, got a nail in the tire, so okay. called the tire guy. I was like, "Hey, what's what's up? I need to get a tire put on." He's like, "What kind?" And I was like, "Okay, it's a uh, like what was it? Uh, you know, two fifty fifty R seventeen." uh what 91 h uh pro contact tx <laughs> <laughs> so you know what i'm saying it's like this really detailed shit man like it's not just like a normal tire you know and the guy's like uh we don't have that we we can't even get it and i'm like what so i got problems man <laughs> can't get one even huh? he said that he said there's a worldwide tire shortage yeah there yeah there's a shortage of everything anymore i mean and i'm like you know knock it off already guys with this bullshit right the whole shortage thing and then the whole you know they're just wanting to raise the prices i think already. inflation and shortages and knock it off already knock it off right all right <laughs> Like if I'm your mom and you're listening to me, knock it off. You know what I mean? That's what my mom would say to me. You're acting like a knucklehead and quit. Well, I don't know who these people's moms are. I'm starting to wonder if they even had a mom, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this inflation thing and this whole uh this whole shortage thing. I need a tire today. I told the guy, I was like, so I have a nail in my tire. I need a new tire. It's in the sidewall. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, you can't. Can't plug it, patch it. Can't nothing really. It, it, shouldn't, no. at least. And so, anyway, uh, yeah. No, no, we, I don't know how we get one of those. But I'll tell you what, if you do get one from somewhere, bring it in. We'll put it on for you. I was like, <laughs> I was like okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll eat a box of rubber bands and I'll shit one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, well, let's talk about real estate. How's that? We don't have a big group today and I wonder why. I was kind of just bullshitting waiting on folks to show up, but. Well, it, I think it's a uh, wife fell and wrote something. I don't know what it was. Well, that's what I heard. I don't know what he didn't what say what, of, what she broke, but she, he thought it was broke. He was in the murder or the yeah. Uh, I don't know what she may have broken either, and let's remember her and her right. prayers. Yep, I don't know. And Ed too, because you know that stuff always comes with a price tag too. You know. Yeah. And uh, ain't nothing in this world for free. So, you know, when somebody gets hurt and goes to the ER, you know, usually that's some pretty big money out of something. You know, somebody's paying something somehow. So, uh, now remember them you know, in your prayers or whatever, guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, normally we have 10, 12, 15 people here. I think this is uh, August the 8th, and it's like the end of summer, and people are wanting to get back to school and wanting to go on vacation before school starts that and get ready for school too and and then i think um we've had several new people subscribe to the club lately so the club's growing and that's great so i do realize that people partake of this and that you know whatever they feel like they can or are interested in all right um I'll tell you what, I'm trying to get Kenny to come on and do Kenny Wright. He's in the, he's in our group here. If you guys see Kenny, tell him, hey man, give us a free session on. <laughs> I haven't seen him on here for on here for a while. Well, yeah, he's in the chat room over on Facebook Messenger, by the way, which is another thing is not everybody gets in on that because you know not everybody's on Facebook Messenger. So I get that. But um but anyway, is that my dog? Is that my dog or is that somebody else's dog? Oh, uh, it's, it's yours. Mm. All right. Wait, I think one of the kids. Sounds like a little dog. Uh, it sounds like one of the one of my dogs, but one it sounds like one of the kids is in there jacking around with it and making it bark. 
I'm gonna have to go crack some skulls. No, I'm just kidding. I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> We're both grown men now. So, uh, yeah, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the chat room. So he's in the chat room. Can he write? Can he write? If you if you think about it, say, hey, Kenny, let's do a land session on land. Oh, land session. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well. L-A-N-D, land, right? So. I always thought the twins were going to, I call them the twins. We're going to teach us well, how to do that because they've been working in that. But, well, I'd love that too. You know the we've twins? Asked, we've asked them several times. Uh, 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 twins? And they kind of just, they really are telling us the truth that they, they really don't feel like it's any different than the, 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 the texting model that I teach all the time. Um, I, I think they're right. It is. But at the same time, I think what they may not realize too is, is that one, we love knowledge and two, it's interesting. Even if they feel like it might be repetitive, it's interesting from this particular angle to hear. And then it's also interesting to hear because we like them so much that we want to it kind of like it's a way for us to kind of enjoy them and celebrate um but kenny wright you know like i'm going to take it anywhere i can get it and he's awesome experienced okay so <laughs> i'd love to do both kenny wright land okay okay <laughs> If you see him, if you've run into him on social media. That vacant land, is it? Or yeah. Like like city city lots or what have you, you know. Okay. That kind of thing. Out there, and this goes for everybody out there too. If you run in, in if you're listening to the replay, <clears throat> which a lot of folks do. Oh, by the way, Team Stark, under the weather, sick. Get get well, guys. Miss you guys too. Um, COVID. I don't think it's COVID. Strep throat. I think it's what she said. And, you know. Kenny Wright, though, if you run into him on social media or if you're in the chat room, just holler out at him and say, hey, I heard you may be doing a land, a session on land. That's all you got to say. And then let's see if we can get him. I'd like to get him committed to it because I'm real excited about his level of knowledge on this is extreme. And he's been through some health issues lately and he's, he's recovered. And I believe, Hey, you know what, you know, God's given us an opportunity here. We might as well strike while the iron's hot. Okay. okay. So Kenny Wright land, Kenny Wright land. I'm going to scratch the book club idea. Cause we didn't have a lot, a lot of interest in that. Not really. <laughs> That's go ahead. That's an update for you too in the club. Yes, sir. All right. I got for everybody that's on the apprentice team here, and both of you guys are. I want you to know that tonight I'm going to discuss a new couple changes that need to happen with the uh, dispositions process. Okay, if that makes any sense. You guys will have to wait because I don't want to tell everybody because this is just apprentice team stuff. It wouldn't make any sense for anybody else. So there's that. Um, so tonight I'll be talking about that at 6.30 Central Time. For a half hour, we have Monday night team sessions for half hour apprentices. And by the way, everybody, can I talk about the apprentice team for a minute? Sure. Um, if you want on the apprentice team and or wonder yeah. what it is even, real quickly, what it is, is I wanted to put something together that was a little more hands-on, a little more involved, where we could duplicate REI reply for you. Okay, so you didn't have to set it up yourself. We could 
give you access to our team scraping solutions so you didn't have to buy that. We could give you access to a team prop stream account so you don't have to pay for that. Give you the, the coaching club subscription here, all included. And then you could join in the calling sellers together sessions and you could join in some of these other uh, once a week sessions like I was just talking about tonight. We're having a team session, private for apprentices. So there's some things you could plug into. There's my one-on-one -on -one calendar still as part of the coaching club here. So lots of things you could plug into, you know, really to access your success. Okay, well, you know, not everybody understands that. And I'm not really great at, I haven't been great at communicating that that's what the program is meant to do. In order for me to do that, there are some expenses involved. Okay, I have to buy you REI Reply. I have to pay to have it set up just like mine. Okay, I have to have scraping solutions paid for for you. I also have to provide prop stream for you. So um, not only that, but I'm providing the coaching, the one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and not only that, but my executive dispositions team, which I spend an extensive amount of time working with and training. So it's pretty involved. So um, it's a heavy duty program for people that are real serious. And so what I end up finding here is, is it costs me the first month about $500 to get it set up and to get it running for you and cover all the expenses. Okay. Every month thereafter, it costs me about $250 to run for you. Okay. So my offer to anyone in the club here is if you feel like that is something that would advantage you, then let's talk. I am going to ask you, though, in return to just simply cover the costs for your chair on my acquisition squad, okay? And that's what you'll do. You'll be an acquisition squad member, and then everything else will be done for you, okay? That's it. But the costs are about 500 the first month, and then after that, 250 a month, okay? So that's what we are doing for people who are not interested, I mean, who are not in the apprenticeship program or mentor, you know, mentor apprenticeship program, but they want to be, okay? If you want to be, if you're already in it, you're in it, okay? If you're, if you're wanting to get in it and you're not in it already, that's what we're doing at cost, okay? right now end of summer and, and the reason why it's that way is because well that's what it cost me okay i don't want to pay for your experiment in real estate <laughs> but i will invest my time and faith in you if you believe enough in yourself to cover your own costs in my model that's really what this is all right so Anybody out there, you know, that's in the club, and that's all I'm talking to right now is just club members. Okay. A lot of you have been here for a while, and you've been sitting on the fence, or you've been sitting on the bench watching other people play and all that. Well, if you want to get involved and you need a little bit of uh, team support and, you know, all that, hey, great. Come on, let's, let's work. But that's what it's going to cost, Okay. And I've had several team members lately step up and say, hey, that sounds good. I like that, okay? And I'm, I'm trying to get the money together, okay? I've had some students say that too. Here, some people in the club. Okay, I get that, all right? I get that. Not everybody can, you know, say, hey, I'm comfortable with changing from whatever I'm paying now to be in the club to 250 a month. Okay. That's a lot. Well, but that comes with the club that comes with REI reply scraping solutions and prop stream. Okay. So 
add all that up, you couldn't buy that for that cheap. Okay. So it's a good deal. I'm not taking advantage of anyone here. It's just simply what it costs me. All right. Cause I'm getting it cheaper. Cause I'm, I'm a little bigger than others. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's the apprenticeship program. I also have a JV program here in the club. If you just out there willing and dealing and making deals happen and you get deals under contract, bring them in. Let's JV. Okay. JV partner. 50, 50. You can use my executive dispositions team. Like as if it were your own. You guys see this. I've been playing with this while I'm talking. This is an ear. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a potato. Isn't that weird? It's an ear. And it's like, Hello, can you hear me? And this one here is a heart. Okay. And it's a it's a stress reliever. Squeezy. Squeezy, yeah. It's really kind of cool. And uh, I've got a brain coming as well. <laughs> uh. And I thought the the idea was is that you know when we're salespeople we talk to the ear, but really we're either talking to the heart or we're talking to the brain. Which one? Might be important for us to recognize which one we're talking to, the heart or the brain. And I like that. that these feel really cool in your hands. Amazon. It's crazy what you can get now. All the gadgets. All the bullshit you can buy with your hard-earned money. Well, I want to express one more thing before we move on. And that is, is that if you want to be successful and you are in this club i want you to be successful and i will do whatever i can okay and i i will do it if i can if i can't i'll tell you i can't okay but i'll do it so in other words i'm trying to invent ways to help you plug in to walk more closely with me And uh, we're going to see if we can make this, make this happen for you. You know what I want? I want to at least get your money back. How's that? Wouldn't that be cool? If we at least got your damn money back. You could say, well, fucking got my money back. I'm out. <laughs> All right, cool. All that time. You know, I, there's something to be said about this, everyone. You know, um, I totally have felt that same way. I've totally felt that same way. And I've made that commitment. I'm going to do this till I get my money back. Well, you know, the fact is, is that after I got my money back, I wanted to keep doing it. <laughs> but I did make a commitment to get my money back. I want to I want to put out a policy here that I think is hard to adapt as a new person, but I think everyone will be blessed to do so, and that is is uh, realizing that the more you care about making a sale, the more difficult it becomes to make a sale. Mm. And that's just ironic, isn't it? Because what other thing in the universe can you think of besides love that works that way? Sure. The more you want it, the more difficult it becomes. Why is that? I, God, I don't know. You know, I didn't invent the thing. I just... I'm just telling you what I've, what I've been through, right? So other salespeople have been through the same thing. I've seen other people, I've seen copywriters talk about this. I've, you know, people that write advertising. I've, I've seen other, other marketers and, and sales personnel and across other industries talk about this. The more I want it, the more difficult and elusive it becomes. The more I want it, the more hard it is to find. Why is that? 
But when I stop caring about it so much, things come easier. Now, that doesn't mean they got sloppy. Okay, now let's be very clear about that. They're not talking about not caring, meaning I'm sloppy. No, they're, they're sharp. They're doing good work. They're on target with their sales techniques. But if this guy doesn't say yes, you guys have heard me say it this way, and I'm going to apologize in advance for the vulgarity. If you want to put earmuffs on, I'm going to cuss. But here it is. This is the attitude you have to have. You know what? If this homeowner doesn't like what I'm talking about, fuck them if they can't take a joke. <laughs> right? <laughs> You've heard me say that. Now, when you have that kind of don't care attitude, but you're still not sloppy about it, you're sharp. Now you're you now you're finding your rhythm. Okay, that's the rhythm that works. But to be really intense about it, or to be anxious about it, or to be obsessed with it. All that energy chases this away for some reason. We are on the hunt, so we have to sneak up on it with a little bit of a don't care attitude. With a little bit of, hey, I can walk away and it's just fine by me. Mr. Homeowner, if this is not a good fit, you, it's okay. You can tell me no. I mean it. I'll say it several times through the call because I mean it, not just because it's something I want to plug into a formula. Okay. Mr. Ho and they pick up on that. They, they sense this energy. Mr. Homeowner, you know, we've been talking here for several minutes and you've said yes to a lot of things. I'm not sure if you are really comfortable with me or not. We just met. If I send you this agreement, what happens then? You're not just being polite, are you? It's okay if you want to tell me no right now. Okay, I, I mean it when I say that, okay? It's not just something I plug into a formula, all right? So a little bit of an attitude shift, okay? I think will do us all good, okay? A little bit of an attitude. Hey, Victor, Victor D., hey, thanks, bro. Been missing you guys this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so the more you care, the less you're uh, the less you're going to find. The less you care about making a sale, the easier the sales come. That's just the opposite of the equation. The less you give a shit. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. So I think I think one problem is 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 one. One, we don't realize that, but then two, even when we do realize it, we are nice people. Okay, we're we're really nice people. Okay. Maybe we're too nice, huh? Yeah, we're super fucking nice. I mean, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings either. We don't want to, we don't want to be rude to anybody. Okay. Well, you're starting, now you're starting to creep over the borderline of giving a shit too much okay. when it comes to this conversation. Now, I'm not talking about between you and your partner or your spouse or wife, girlfriend, whatever. I'm talking about on this particular prospecting type call. If you're worried about their feelings, I'm, you know, and I know this is contrary to everybody that's popular right now. <laughs> You know, that's another thing, man. If the entire crowd is running east, you better take a look at what the fuck's going on over on the west. Okay? Because everybody's wrong most of the time. All right? So, in my opinion, some of this stuff has gone a little too far. Like, we need, 
like I see it in, I see it on Facebook all the time and I just want to vomit. Okay. And everybody, you have the right to disagree. And you know that here, eat the meat, spit out the bones, eat the chicken, spit out the bones. I've always said that. Okay. Take everything I say and you judge for yourself. I'm only sharing my experience. Okay. You will have your own experience. I see this on Facebook all the time and it makes me want to vomit. And I'm literally serious. Like I really despise this because it's been driven into the, the first time I heard it, the first five times I heard it, I was like, yeah, that's really good. Now I'm just like vomit. Ugh. And here's what it is. The most important thing, and it'll be on Facebook just like this on somebody's post. The most important thing when calling a homeowner is to make sure that they understand that your entire purpose is to help them. You are there to solve their problem, whether that's for your, your profit or not. And then they'll follow it up with a testimonial like this. I always help homeowners whether or not I can make money or not. If there's something I can do for them, I'll do it. Pat myself on the back. Fucking vomit, man. That's that's so fucking modern and progressive. And let me tell you, a lot of this new shit don't work, man. This new shit don't work. What the fuck are we talking about? Are you, you're gonna call a homeowner and you're gonna convince them that the entire purpose of your call is to find out what problems they have so you can fucking volunteer to help? No. What the fuck is that about? How does that work? I mean, I, ultimately, there's a baseline of truth to this, though. But that's not our approach. Our baseline to tr uh, of truth in this is, is that, yes, we are looking for homeowners that have problems that we can solve right. and, and solve for a profit. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're not. And and guts doesn't say, okay, Mr. Homeowner, we just want to help you. You know, we're here to help you, even if you know it's not just it's not about the money for us. You know, if there's something we can do to to help you in your problem, boy, I'll I'll do it. I'll sure do it. You know, that's not guts. Guts is saying, hey, Mr. Homeowner. Okay, I'm sorry if I. I'm just going to coach out right now. It's sacking up and saying, Mr. Homeowner, yeah, I can't do it that way because I won't make any money. I'm an investor and I actually want to put something together here where I can put some good people in that property that want to buy it. And when they do, I'm going to make some money doing it. But now I also recognize that this has to be a good solution for you. You guys will hear me say that in almost every phone call because I am not ashamed of making money here and that is exactly what the hell I'm doing and I'm not here to solve everybody's fucking problems and make everybody happy and fulfill that hole inside their heart that only God can fulfill <laughs> I'm not <laughs> I'm not here to try to solve their emotional you know I, I don't know I'm here to use their emotional to get into a situation where their problem is solved and I make a profit thereby. Period. And I think we go all charity oriented because we're good people. Okay. We are good people. I learned this lesson in a very metaphorical fashion from an old Italian lady. Well, I don't know that she was from Italy, but she was from Sicily. Okay. Sicilian. And actually from there, immigrated to the United States. I sat in her kitchen on a pitch. Mm. And she looked at me and she said, I like you. And she sounded Italian. I like you. She said, I know I can trust you. 
She said, but you know why you have problems? I said, what do you mean? She said, you have lots of relationship problems, don't you? I said, yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> How did you know? She said, because you have no grease on you. And I was like, I didn't even understand. And I asked a few people later, what, is, what does this old Italian lady mean? And what she was saying is, is you ain't slick. <laughs> you ain't slick <laughs> at all. <clears throat> You're very passive. You go along with, every, oh, you want me to like you. You want me to like you so damn bad, you'll lie to me. And because of that, you're obvious, and I kind of trust you. That's really what she was saying. <laughs> well, I went back and visited with that Italian lady several times after that. And that's exactly what she meant. She meant that I needed to sack up and start being honest with people and be a straight business person, a straight shooter, right to the point, and stop trying to dance around and make people fucking like me even on a pitch like me don't like me i don't care i make more sales that way going in insisting that everyone be comfortable about everything and like you and not ever wanting to ask uncomfortable questions i had another sales advisor well he was really like a regional manager for a company i worked for one time he came to me one time and he said you know justin he said, you're a really talented, man, and you're knocking down them sales. You're killing it. He said, here's the thing. He said, you'll know what I'm talking about. He said, you ever been on a set? He says, well, that's what they call the pitch, right? You go to somebody's house, you pitch. He said, you ever been on a set and you, you were talking with this individual and you, they were just being standoffish about it or they were throwing your objections up there or, or stalls or what have you. He said, did you ever have a really, really crazy thought come to mind of some shit that you should say, but you knew that if you said it, it was going to be the most outlandish shit ever. And it was probably going to piss them off and they'd throw you out of their house. I said, yeah, I've had those thoughts, man. I said, yeah, I try to, I try to think through my thoughts before I talk, you know, so I don't do that. He said, stop it. He said, next time those thoughts come to mind, say it. He said, you think it'll make them mad? He said, and maybe that's what they need to hear. He said, when you do this, you'll close more deals. He said, you're in there right now doing what everybody does. He said, but if you start saying those things that you know no one else is willing to say, they'll start buying from you. Wow. <clears throat> dude changed my life that guy's name was william graves he's out of indiana haven't talked to him in probably three decades nah probably two it's funny the things people say like that that stick with you forever but it was all about attitude and I've done things like that. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy, but I have said some real crazy stuff. <laughs> and you guys believe me, because you've heard me say some crazy stuff to you. Okay. But in reality, you know, it does take some cojones, man. It takes some huevos. It takes some huevos. What is that? That's eggs, right? <laughs> it takes guts to say what needs to be said. And that really is a lot of times the very thing that makes the difference. Mr. Homeowner, I don't think this is going to be a good fit. You, you don't sound like somebody that's, that's going to be a good fit for me, man. Okay. Be willing to say that Mr. Homeowner, I'll tell you what, this is a solution for you. So here's what I'm going to do. I know you don't recognize the value of me in your life right now, but you will. I promise I'm going to send you my agreement anyway to your email. What is your email?
Take control. Be the boss. Okay. Be the boss. Be Sasha Fierce. All right. Hello. Do you hear me? <laughs> right. Okay. And then learn to talk to their heart. I think that's important. All right. Enough about that. That's my soapbox for today. We have 15 minutes left. We lost Vaughn. We've had some folks popping in on Facebook, some folks that were out and about, and they tuned in for a minute and had to run again. I appreciate you watching out there, everybody. Thank you. God bless you for watching. We just wrapped up a really deep segment on attitude when it comes to being a great salesperson or or phone caller here okay yeah attitude so rewind and check that out everybody all right uh larry what's going on in your life man <laughs> so on the uh when you have a Signed contract and it's sent to the disposition team. Is that you never hear any more about it? Or how's that work? Did you have one that you sent in? Yeah, I, I got one sent in. Who'd you so send it into? It? <sighs> Who's working on it? Is that Mark's team or Alex's team? I mean, uh, Mark or Ed's team? It was Mark's, but now it's Ed's. But I, I think it was probably Mark. Okay. So you'll have to follow up with them because I'm not I'm not privy to that information. Uh, I am only privy to the information over here on Ed's team. And then I kind of let Mark's team self-manage. So um, what was the address, man? Or hold on. No, I'm looking. Um, I've got a deal from Ed. I got a deal from Naheem. I got another deal from Naheem. Y'all don't know Naheem. He's a cool dude. He's a JV partner of ours. I'd like to get a deal from Larry, but it's over at Mark's team. So we got to get a hold of Mark and Connor. They'll be at the session tonight. So at the latest, we'll talk to them tonight at 630 Central Time. Okay. Well, I, I was just wondering what happens because – the girl, yeah. I think it was October 1st we got to, because she's got to find a place to live. So, Well, um, That's going how to we do it over here on Coach Ed's team is, is we are um, always available for updates anytime, any day of the week, really. And um, we try to let you know at least once a week via text or something. It is, in fact, on the calendar every Friday – I'll show you right here, right now. You can take a look and you'll see exactly what I mean. This is the executive team for, this is Coach Ed's team. You can see on Friday, Alex, it says, send update text to acquisition members with active deals. Let them know how their deal is coming along. So that's how we do it over here, okay? They might not be quite so uh, routine as that over there though. And uh, you might just need to check in with them and say, hey, what's going on over here with my deal? And they'll let you know. They're good dudes. So if it comes over here, I'll, I'll let you know, but it's not, in my, uh, it's not in my domain right now. And we'll see, we'll see them tonight. So we'll get everything square today, man. Okay. Well, I, I don't think there's probably any news yet because she's still – Got to find a place. So, yep. We will be talking about a little bit of a change on the dispositions process tonight, though. So, this is something that's just of necessity. And, and it's going to be, it's not a humongous change, but it is a slight change. So, everybody that's on the team will want to at least hear that or uh, ask about it later if you can't make it tonight. Hey, it's good to see Vic here, man. What's going on, bro? What's up, Justin? 
what's up? How are you and uh, Christina doing? You feeling better? <coughs> oh, she's coughing in the background. <coughs> oh, I see. Was it strep throat? Is that what's going on? Yeah, shit. So we got a, a rabbit. And I think that's where the uh, infection comes. It's either it started off as a just a allergy, and then she might have been coughing because of the allergies, and then that might have caused an infection, and then that's how uh, yeah. the situation evolved. But we got a yeah. rabbit, and that's I think that's where the source of the infection may be coming in or something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know much about rabbits. But it sounds possible. Neither do we, but uh <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. I've no I knew somebody that had a rabbit one time. It got huge, man. It was big. Like it's what you think of when somebody says Easter bunny, you're like, oh yeah, or like a giant Easter bunny. <laughs> this was huge. Like it, but it ate a lot too, you know. Like they fed it yeah, a lot I, and everything. I saw a, a picture of this dude holding a rabbit and it was like bigger than one of those like huge dogs. It's like, yeah, it's like half a human. Yeah. It's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Like it could barely move. It couldn't hop anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fat. It couldn't hop anymore. That's pretty, I felt sorry for it. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, um, uh, Hopefully you guys get feeling better soon. I mean, how do you get to feeling better? Are you are you are you kind of getting coming around, or maybe not so much because you're still hanging around the the rabbit, or you're gonna have to break up with the rabbit, or like what what happens, man? <laughs> no, I think uh, we just need a better. Once we get rid of the strep throat and all that stuff, but we're still we're still functioning. I, it's just yeah. still uh, we're not doing our calls as we we are supposed to be doing. So we're not doing the lead gen. But I am making some call, calls to Twilio and uh, switching stuff over, like getting a new CRM. But other stuff besides making calls, so we're we're able to actually yeah. make some kind of productivity this week, though. Yeah. Okay. Good. Man. That's cool. <clears throat> You know, part of being an entrepreneur is having downtime. And that happens. It really does. And you got to roll with it, you know, and all that. So you guys are getting a flavor, a taste of that flavor right now. And so that's good that you're doing something productive. You feel feel like and that that helps you feel better too, you know. So that's good. Miss you guys though. Wish you were wish you were both feeling better. And you will be. Yeah, you'll get better. Thanks, Larry. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Justin. Am I still invited to the wedding? Of course. Are y'all getting married? <laughs> Who, who's getting married? <laughs> hey, somebody for real getting married? I don't know. Hey, you know, somebody is getting married. Somebody in the club. It's not, I don't know, maybe you guys don't even know this individual because he hasn't been around that much lately, but it's one of our uh, one of our coaches. I won't say who. One of our coaches. Wow. I've, I refer to this person as Coach So and So. Getting married. Wow. I'm just wow. gonna leave. I'm that. just gonna leave that fucking mystery out there. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> does Does the coach have hair, or does he not have hair? I don't know. Don't know. I ain't seen him in a minute. <laughs> 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 All right. So. You know, he's a private guy, and I probably already said too much, but I'm I'm really, really happy for him, and uh, that's fantastic news. It's always fantastic when somebody finds love and wants to make a lifelong commitment to it, you know. Congratulations, <laughs> mystery coach. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations, Mr. Coach, mystery, Mr. Mystery Coach. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, anything we need to talk about before we wrap up? We've got about five minutes here that we usually delegate an hour or so, maybe a little more to this session. Kind of the end of summer. It's a little bit lower. I want to get a land workshop going on with Kenny Wright for us as soon as possible. <laughs> uh, that'd be really cool. And uh, also kind of want to yeah, do... I think the, uh, there was one that you did like last year or something, right? So didn't he promise a part two in somewhere in that somehow 
Well, that was uh, Texas Lease Options, I think is what he did oh, before. Okay. And yeah, um, he would, okay, yeah, he would, he'd be good at either one of those. And I, I would love to do all of the above. Um, okay, he was sending me a message the other day. I'm going to send him a message right now, everybody. Watch this. Hey, Kenny. Comma, what do you think? Question mark. Are you up for a session on land? Question mark. We can even put it on your schedule, period. It doesn't have to be on ours, period. We will make time to grow from your vast knowledge, period. Thank you, dude, period. All right. What the fuck, guys? Yeah. Ask, ask and you, you know, you have not because you ask not. That's what the man said. So. And even if you can't, like, you know, commit to an hour, maybe 15, 30 minutes, better than nothing. Yeah. Session on land. That's pretty cool. Even if it was just an open Q&A. Okay. Because I think we could all hear Vic and Vaughn and Larry and myself, it, we can come up with some pretty, sorry, we can come up with some pretty dope ass questions. <laughs> like we, like we want right. to know, you know, Hey, what, how does this work? <laughs> like, I want to know how do land surveys work? How much do they cost? When do you need one? Or do you need one? How do I necessarily do comps on land? Okay. These are some questions I have. All right. Do you guys relate? Yes. Yeah. I feel like these are some, Great questions. <laughs> so we'll see if we can put that together. That'd be good. And then uh, I'd like to do some real in depth. And I'm I'm I I don't know if everyone realizes this, but I have a challenging chore. Uh, maybe it's not a chore; is not the right word, but it's a task. And that is, as I do these Monday sessions, and I've been doing these Monday sessions for years now. Well, it's not always been Monday. It's been Wednesdays or Mondays or what have you. But I've been doing this every week for years. And I've talked about lease options. And I've talked about co-sailing. And we've had guests in on a myriad of different topics. And we've done mindset. And we've done live calls. And we've done everything I can think of under the sun. And... This year, we've even had workshops a lot throughout the year that weren't even on Mondays. So we, uh, we do a lot. But my, why I say it's a difficult job is because some folks have been in the club for a really, really long time. And they, I feel a, a sense of responsibility to kind of sort of have newish material or at least a new angle on it because they've heard a lot already. But then the new people arriving, I feel like they need to start from the ABCs. So it's a bit of a challenge for me to do the ABCs in a way that's interesting and exciting, even for people who have experienced it already. I hope that makes sense. So I want, with all that being said, I want to hear coming up soon, not only do a land thing with Kenny, but I also want to kind of do like another, I want to do a real intense, like really fucking intense, like expert level phone squad up session, like maybe four of them, okay, where we get together and this is just like the real phone shit like i am laying it out there i'm gonna call some leads we're gonna demo we're gonna but we kind of do all this shit already so it's like i don't know if you guys have long, i guess long story short is, is if you have any ideas of things you'd like to experience here in the club let us know we'd like to put them on our list okay we do have a short list of things we want to do at all times okay a um, couple of the things I just mentioned are on the list. There's some other things that are on the list. I'd like to do more dispositions training. Everybody's probably like, yeah, definitely. 
Okay. If so, let me know. I'll put that up on top of the fucking list. All right. So <laughs> whatever you guys need is what I'm saying. Let me know. Okay. And I'll try to make it happen for you so that, you know, you have what you need moving forward, the kind of trainings you want. Okay. Maybe you want something different. Maybe it's time to jump, jump into some subject to training or some, maybe just straight options or maybe something else. Okay. There's so many things and it's sometimes I'm so close to the forest. I don't see the trees. Okay. Not all of them, at least just a few. All right. So hit me up. If you got an idea, put it in the chat room or, just send me a message or something like that. We'll plug this in. Okay. Um, besides that, is Team Start going to be back on uh, YouTube tomorrow? Um, what do you think? Do you think you can make calls tomorrow? Uh, she's probably not going to make calls, but I'll make calls. <laughs> yeah, it's she okay. can't speak right now. Okay. We look forward to that, man. And that's kind of caught on. Um, people watch that dude. I don't know if you've checked out the numbers, but I mean, it's, it gets, it gets some attention, man. People are interested in you guys and your experiences. And so, you know, I'm interested too. And in, if you need to take the day off, cause you're not feeling well, Hey, I totally get that, do that. But if, if you, uh, if you, I just want you to know people enjoy it, man. And, uh, we miss it when you're not there. So, um, I also wonder too, if there's any other folks in the club that have, some really great ideas that maybe we could use as a, you know, on YouTube. I'm trying to get Alex to do a 30 minute disposition show sometime once a week. Where he just, like idea. Yeah. Where he just talks about the deals he's got and like he's, that he's working on. Maybe he even finds a tenant buyer through one of those or, or an investor buyer. Okay. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that would be very interesting because there's nothing like that anywhere on the internet that I know of where people, it's an entire, you know, episodic show where the guy just does nothing but talk about the disposition side of this business, whether that's subject to or lease options or some other creative finance, it doesn't matter. It's all basically the same when it comes to dispositions. So, you know, interesting i think so maybe we can get him to do that too that'd be cool i don't know yeah i'd watch that i'd, I'd love that yeah i'd watch that i i also would love to watch um like larry was saying um lashonda and sandra or maybe both of them separately or together or maybe rotating alternating or something doing doing their own little half hour maybe they could get prospects or maybe they could build a nice online reputation that way that would help them do more deals the club really is all about helping you guys do what you want to do and, and, and what's in your heart. And I love to say yes. Do I often say no? Here's my deal with you. I don't mind you asking. As long as you don't mind me saying no. That's my favorite one. Okay. Yeah. Now, with that being said, I love when you ask and I love to say yes, but I Dude, need you, it. Yeah. Go ahead, Vaughn. Oh, I was just going to say, you should do like, um, I was thinking it'd be cool if you did like some YouTube shorts where it's like, this objection drives me crazy, you know, or, or this objection makes me want to like slam my head in the wall or something like that. I think that would be uh, very interesting too. Yeah, that would be cool. You know what makes me think about that being successful, Vaughn, is if I said, hey, this objection drives me crazy, and then I actually play a live objection from a live call, and then, uh, I, ask, then I ask people like you and Vic and Larry and other viewers to put their response in the comments. Yeah. Would that be kind of cool? Instead of just me yeah, being the damn good. expert all the fucking Interactive. time? Interactive. Yeah. We'll would probably come up with some good ideas that ain't stuff I've even heard of or even thought of yet. It'd be great. Yeah. And, wanna... and maybe it doesn't have to be your own calls. It could be, you know, the apprentice team calls. I, I totally 100% agree up. with it. Fuck yeah. Chop them up. Hey, do you mind if I ask something real quick? Um, so like, ha like t on the topic of like mindset and like staying positive and this and that, um, 
you know, because I, I've been encountering a lot of like, um, oh, I've been hit up about this for like by 50 different people or, oh, are you with the American leasing company? You know, um, like had, cause I, I know I'm not supposed to have like this lack mentality. And, you know, I understand that there's a million people in the world that, that are trying to sell their houses, but like, how do, how do I overcome that mental block? Cause I feel like it's adding a lot of resistance to, to like my mindset going into things. If, if like they're already being approached by a million other people, is this being oversaturated or am I just, am I just overthinking it? No, it just makes a lot of sense right now, man. Like the lease option offer lease purchase offer makes a lot of sense. And homeowners are hearing it more now than ever, because it's just the right, this is the time in history. So now that is a consequence of now it's easier to find motivated homeowners, but now there's more competition from other investors that are doing the same strategy of lease options. So we have to be different. We have to be a little better. Okay. Oh, yeah. hold on. My boss is here. You can keep talking though. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We have to be better. We have to be a little more, maybe aggressive, a little more smarter, a little more gutsy. Okay. When a homeowner says, well, you know, I, I don't know, I, you work for so-and-so. No. Why? Is that a problem? I'm not sure why you're asking. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I've, got, I've heard this pitch a lot. I mean, is, is it like the same company or is there like a lot of different people doing this? Well, Mr. Homeowner, you've been asked this a lot. Yeah. I mean, I've had been asked this several times. Somebody every week calls me or sends me a message or something wants to know if I can do this. Like, I don't even know what this is all about, where all you people are coming from. Well, Mr. Homeowner, why did you never accept one of those responses? Mr. Homeowner, why are you talking to me today, but you didn't want to do business with any of them? What makes me different and how can I make this deal work for you? Okay. I don't take any shit off nobody, man. And that's, they're going to come at you with that. Great, Mr. Homeowner, why didn't you do business with any of the 50 other people? Well, I've had four, I've had four people call me and offer that same thing. Great. Why didn't you take their offer? What didn't work about that? Okay, great. If I solve that problem, can we do business? If I'm different, hey, Mr. Homeowner, I understand you've been beat up with phone calls from all kinds of people. Let me tell you what, I want to make an offer today and you're going to love me. Yeah, that's really good. You just flip it around and qualify them. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And see, your competition is not doing this. Your competition is doing this bleeding heart shit. Well, Mr. Homeowner, see, what we're trying to do is we're trying to help our, we have people that we work with that really need to, you know, they want to buy a home and they're good people. Bleeding heart. I'm bleeding all over for these people. Oh, I would just want to help them. Oh, Mr. Homeowner, I know if I could just solve your problem for you. I just want to help you. I'm just a, I'm fucking Mother Teresa. I don't even care about the money. That's what your competition sounds like. And it's bullshit and it's weak and nobody buys it. So when you call and you're totally different, you can slam dunk these deals. Especially if you know advanced maneuvers, one, two, three, and four. Okay which we talked about a little bit last week in our apprentice meeting. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today, but we ended up just kind of chatting. So, or I got off on different topics. So, yeah. Um, I think, you know, Vaughn, ultimately to answer the question, we just need to uh, kind of just be a little more a gutsy, a little more, a little less nice. You're too damn nice, Vaughn. Vaughn, I love you to death, man. I feel like you're my little brother. I fucking love you, man. Okay? But that's not how you should talk to homeowners. Okay? That's how you and I talk to each other. You got to talk to these homeowners like you don't give a rat's ass. Okay. You'll get more deals. <laughs> I guarantee. And that kind of is what we were talking about earlier. All right. So we've come full circle. I do have an idea I want to employ with you tonight. 
Vaughn, after the session, we'll have a quick meeting, you and I, and I want to offer a slightly different piece of advice and see if that helps you personally. All right. Anything else anybody got to talk about, want to talk about, need from me before we call it a quit day here for now? I'm going to go eat lunch at Jimmy John's. You know, fuck it. That's what I say. I'm going to eat Jimmy John's. <laughs> Does anybody what know what ending. Jimmy John's is? Huh? What's Jimmy John's? No, what's Jimmy John's? <laughs> what's Jimmy John's? Hey, do you have a Jimmy John's over there, Larry? Y yes, we do. Illinois. They got Jimmy John's in Illinois. Go ahead. California, did you, though, I guess. Did you, did you ever eat there? Not for quite a while. Yeah. It's like Subway, except like more boring, maybe? I don't know. More boring, but it's really good. And uh, it's cold cuts. It's just all cold cuts, I guess is what I mean by boring. No hot sandwiches that I'm aware of. And they're only like eight inches long instead of a foot long. But, you know, who really needs a foot long? You know what I mean? Who really <laughs> So eight inches is about right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love you guys. I'll see you both later tonight, man. Okay. All right. we'll Y'all have a good afternoon, okay? okay. Thanks, Vic. Good, good visiting with you, dude. Take care, guys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah.